Hey guys, my name is Renee if you are new here and as you can tell by the title of the video, we are back with another fragrance video. So now that it's winter time and consistently cold outside, it's time to pull out those heavy hitters. You know those fragrances that require that cold weather, that cold air to have that fragrance perform to its potential? Those. So if you're interested in any of my suggestions, then stay tuned. So first up is a fragrance that I don't see spoken about that often, but that's gonna be Tom Ford's Lavender Extreme. So with this fragrance, I only have a little decan, which is more than enough because it's quite strong. Just enough so I can sort of get an idea if I loved it or not. And unfortunately, this is discontinued, which was just recently happened. You can go into those apartment stores that possibly sell them and still get a bottle. You just have to ask for it. It's probably not out on display. It's definitely not on the website anymore. You'll see it, but it's going to say sold out and you won't be able to purchase it. I just want to say lavender is a note that I absolutely hate in general. But it's like the older I get, the more I'm warming up to it. When I first smelled it, I was like, wait a minute. This is very different. So in Lavender Extreme, the notes are going to be violet lemon, lavender, cinnamon, geranium, rose, tonka bean, and cumarin. And I tell you, at first sniff, you literally smell that punch of lavender. But it's not like a off-putting lavender, because when I used to smell lavender, it would make me sort of get like, feel like I had a sore throat. But recently, even in like my pillow sprays, I've been loving it. It's supposed to be very relaxing. And that's what I feel when I smell this, but it's very different. It can lean sort of masculine if you overspray it. I imagine it smelling amazing on a man. It's very musky, very spicy. Where would I wear this? I would say like a nice winter night, maybe something a little bit more casual, dressy casual. If you don't want to smell like anyone else, if you just want something a little bit more unique, I would definitely suggest this. Maybe not something too, too fancy, so you have to dress up in your nice furs and things like that. I wouldn't necessarily suggest that. But let's say you're going to see the Christmas tree in the city, something that's a little bit casual like that and you're going to be very, feeling very cozy. I would suggest wearing this. Especially, like I said, if you just want to sort of stand out but not off-put anyone, it's going to be very different. So if you don't like lavender, I wouldn't suggest this. But definitely, if you want to check it out, see if you can go into the store and get a sample of it if they have any left. Or maybe check those resale sites. Maybe someone has a decant of it. And maybe if you just want to try something new with lavender, check it out and let me know what you think. Next up on the list is going to be a fragrance by Francis Kirkjohn and it's going to be Grand Soir. So I got this as a sample when I went to get the Discovery set on the Francis Kirkjohn website. Now when I first smelled this, I was like, this smells like men's cologne. Seriously, I'm like, whoa, this is way too strong. At the time, I wasn't into those heavy, heavy hitters, but as my nose matures, I can appreciate the stronger scents, whether I, I would wear it every day or not. When you spray Grand Soir, this is not one of those fragrances where you just spray it and make a decision whether you like it right off the bat. This is something you have to let sit and sort of dissipate, okay, and develop before you can make a decision on whether you like it or not. So let's spray just so I can, you know, get an idea to describe to you guys. This fragrance is what you would wear in the dead of winter. This is not for summer, spring, and I would even say it's not even for fall because fall could sometimes be warm, sometimes be cold. This is for winter, okay? Winter. You need the cold weather for this to perform the way it needs to perform. This dry down is just warm and ambery. I'm gonna go through the notes. The notes in Grand Soir are Cystus Labdamum, Benzoin, Vanilla Accord, and Ambery Accord. You definitely smell that amber dry down. At first sniff, you're definitely gonna be off, it's gonna be off-putting. You're definitely gonna think of a grown man only could pull this off, but where would I wear this to? Like I said, dead of the winter. Definitely, I would think gala, some kind of winter holiday party where you could pull off those heavier, stronger scents. Black tie, if you're gonna be a man wearing it. I definitely see a man probably pulling this off more than a woman, but I definitely feel like if a woman is wearing this, she definitely has to have her stuff together. She has to have a certain kind of confidence when she walks into a room that could pull this off. This is not for someone walking in all shy and doesn't want to be necessarily noticed or not saying if you don't wear this, you have your stuff together, but this is a definitely more of a confident woman who's gonna be wearing such a strong, heavy hitter type of scent. I wouldn't suggest blind buying this fragrance. I definitely would go on the MFK website and see if you can buy a discovery set, see how it works with your body chemistry, and then go from there. 
but I don't think you'll be disappointed. That's only if you're into those heavy hitter fragrances. If you're into something more light and floral, this is not for you. Just letting you know right now. Moving on. Next up is going to be another Francis Kirk Dijon fragrance, and that is going to be Oud Satin Mood, the regular version, not the Extreme. Now, the Extreme also smells beautiful, but I think that smells better on a man. I feel like a lot of men like the Extreme. The Oud Satin Mood is in the same sort of vicinity as the Grand Soir. You really have to love heavy hitters in order to make this work, and to me, this is a winter fragrance. This performs better in cold weather. In Utsa and Mood, the notes are Violet Accord, the Mescana Rose, Rose Absolute, Natural Oud, Benzoin, Amber, and Vanilla. I noticed that in a lot of my fragrances, vanilla is always like a note that is repetitive. The vanilla, the ambers, those are notes that I'm being drawn to, especially during the winter time. Now with this fragrance, I've was shocked that I loved it because normally ouds, I used to smell ouds and I'm like, this is way too heavy for me. But I realized as my, like I said, as my nose matures that it needs to be blended properly. It needs to be blended with something more sweet. This smells very sort of powdery, but still has a sweet undertone. It's just blended to perfection. This, you're gonna be in your fur coats, when it's snowing in the winter time, walking the streets of the city, going to dinner in the winter time, going to brunch in the winter time, this is definitely gonna perform. I wear this to work on a day that I feel like I really wanna show that I mean business, that I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about every day, but I just want you to trust me and know that I know my stuff. I wear this fragrance. I tend to mix this with Baccarat Rouge. To me, it sort of sweetens it up a bit and just creates a completely different scent. Definitely give that a try. Next up is gonna be another Tom Ford fragrance. I feel like I'm doing quite a few Tom Ford fragrances today, but that's going to be Metalique. When I first smelled Metalique when it came on the market, I didn't hate it, but I didn't love it. It literally smelled like what the name is. It just smelled like sweet metal. But now that I've tried it out, it's giving me very much so cozy vibes, like a sweet, metallic, I don't know. It's just blended beautifully. Let's go over the notes. In Metalique, the notes are Bergamot, Heliotrope, Pink Peppercorn, Alpine, and Brett Seed, and Peru Balsam. This I also have a decant as well. I'm going to spray. For some reason, I feel like they probably changed the formulation of this. I don't know. Sometimes I feel like some fragrances, depending on where they're sold, maybe a batch smells different, or I don't know. But I, this is not how it smelled when I first smelled it. It had more of a metallic smell to it that I just could not take. I feel like this fragrance is a good beginner heavy hitter fragrance. If you just want to enter into something that's a little bit more heavy and it's going to make you feel cozy this time of year but it's not going to offend anyone, try Metalik. It's not too off-putting. You don't have to carry it with like 100% confidence when you walk into a room, which you should have confidence every time you walk into a room. Just saying. But you're not gonna feel like the fragrance is wearing you, you're gonna actually be wearing the fragrance and that's what you want. But with this fragrance, it's giving casual. It's giving, even if you wanna just run to the grocery store on a cute Sunday morning and just smell good, you still wanna stand out a little bit, but you don't wanna like stand out, stand out. Wear this, if you wanna go to a nice breakfast and just be casual and cute, wear this. You're gonna feel confident, you're gonna feel cute. Is this blind buy worthy? Um, I would say no. You can, if you already know the kind of notes that you love to wear and that smell good on your body chemistry, I will always suggest please go into a store and test out your fragrances first, at least for a day on your skin, just so you know what they smell like. What's the point of wasting money if you don't have to? Fragrances are way too personal to be blind buying and end up smelling awful on your skin. It just may not be a bad fragrance, it just may not smell good on you, or you just may not love it. Like I said, some of these fragrances, they need time to develop. This one, Metalik, is easy. As soon as you spray it out, I feel like you kind of know if it's gonna work for you or not. It's not a fragrance that's too complex with only first and fifth occasion. It's straight to the point. Either you like it or you don't. Go into the store, try it, and let me know how you like it. Moving on. For this next fragrance, I do not have a decant of it, but I remember specifically how it smells because it literally caught me off guard. And that's gonna be Tom Ford Cafe Rose. This fragrance, again, is very particular. Either you love it or you hate it. I would not suggest blind buying it. You know how 
those Margiela fragrances smell exactly what the name is, this is exactly how Cafe Rose is. It literally smells like a rose coffee. Let's go over the notes. The notes in Cafe Rose are going to be Turkish Rose, Bulgarian Rose, coffee, saffron, black pepper, and dark coffee. Saffron is what makes all those Baccarat Rouge fragrances and extracts so addictive. On first sniff, you're going to smell rose heavy. Right behind it is gonna be that coffee note. And people are gonna think, they're gonna try to figure out like, what are you wearing? Like they can't put their finger on it. And I must admit at first, Tom Ford fragrances, I hate it. But now I can appreciate the fact that some of these private blend fragrances are so unique. They're very niche-like. I haven't smelled anything like it. Like who would think to pair rose and coffee together? Again, this is if you're gonna go maybe for a walk in the city, you're gonna have some coffee, maybe go ice skating during the day. Specifically on a man, I think this will project lovely on their body chemistry. There's something about how they project fragrances that just turns it into a whole different fragrance. Definitely do not blind buy this. Don't take necessarily, again, either you love this fragrance or you're gonna hate it. It's definitely unique. So go into a store and see if you can smell it first. If you're in the market for something a little bit different, but you still want something with a little bit of that coffee, spicy notes in it, try Cafe Rose. Last, but certainly not least, we're gonna go back to Francis Kirk Dijon and we're gonna go to Baccarat Rouge Extrait. A Baccarat Rouge Extrait is a whole other beast. This fragrance is totally different to me than a regular Baccarat. It has more of an almond note and even a tad bit of cherry, if you ask me. I don't know if, if I'm smelling that wrong, but let's go over the notes. The notes in Baccarat Rouge Extrait are going to be jasmine, that lovely saffron, bitter almond from Morocco, cedarwood, musky woody accord, and ambergris. The almond note in the Extrait version definitely projects. To me, this smells so good on a man. I don't know what it is about Baccarat that just smells so much better on them, but I think it's that almond note that attracts them to it. Definitely in the winter time, it projects like nobody's business. You're definitely going to stand out with your body heat and in the cold. I would definitely say this is also maybe something a little bit more casual. Only because, and it is a beautiful scent, but only because Baccarat is a scent that everyone can spot. Don't get me wrong, you're going to stand out in this fragrance, but everyone's going to know what you're wearing unless they're not familiar with the extreme version. Because it has more of that almond note, they may not necessarily be able to pinpoint what it is, but that's why I would say it's more of a casual, maybe winter lunch on a winter day. You could do more like a casual dinner, and you still put together well, but like I said, just because it's a fragrance that a lot of people are aware of and they can pinpoint, I would say it's more on a casual day. But if you want something that is literally going to make you smell amazing try this so that's all i have for you guys today hopefully some of my suggestions have opened your eyes to something new i'm gonna link everything down below that's still available again if you have any winter suggestions that i haven't mentioned or that I should probably have my, put my nose on leave all that below of course i'm always open to new fragrances new scents again i am streamlining my collection i only want things that i love and if i'm gonna try new fragrance i'm always gonna get a decant or try to get a sample of it before i go and get a full bottle which is fine. We should always try before we buy, like I said. <laughs> so with that being said, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, turn on notification bells just so you're aware every time I upload a video. Also, don't forget to follow me on all my social media platforms. That's going to be TikTok, Instagram, of course, my blog, nailinux.com. And until next time.